Cool. Hey friends, welcome to Make Anything. It's Devin here with another 3D pen video. Although this one's gonna be a little bit different because we're not making something from scratch. Instead, I wanted to see how we could use the 3D pen to spruce up some 3D printed models. We're gonna be using a few different pens, but I wanted to start out with a new one that I haven't tried, and this one was sent to me by G-Tech. It's a giant arm 3D pen. This one comes with quite a few tools. It's got a nice little spatula. It's got some little finger protectors made out of rubber so that you don't burn your fingers. That's a new one, I haven't seen that before, and that's actually maybe a little helpful. We've got the 3D pen stand as well. Good amount of sample filaments. A nice clear sheet of plastic to draw on, as well as some templates. Some different animals that are pretty cute. And of course the filament. I'm gonna be using this big roll of G-Tech white PLA. As everyone knows, the best way to open one of these is with a swift two finger jab. Ow! You press this to start and you press it again to stop. That's the way this one works. Of course this is to retract filament. And then there's this other button that lets you switch between three speed settings, it seems. So this is the slow speed. And there's fast speed. And this is the medium speed. All right, the first and easiest thing that you can do with these 3D pens on a 3D print is add eyeballs because eyeballs make everything more interesting and more expressive. I've got this little Aztec skull that I got off Thingiverse. I'm not actually gonna draw this. I'm basically gonna start this thing going and just let the plastic pool inside of his eye cavity. You can also smush that down with your finger a little bit. And then we'll just do two quick blobs for the eyes here. Hold it for one, two, three seconds. Quick pull away. Let's do it again. One, two, three. Quick pull away. There you go. Almost as good as googly eyes. <laughs> but it's actually like fused to the model, you know, so that's pretty cool. This is like part of the model now. Just like that, you've got a multicolor print. Well, there you go. That's probably one of the easiest ways to add a little life to your prints. And it's surprisingly effective for how easy and minimal it is. Next up, we're gonna do something a bit different, a bit more abstract and substantial. We're gonna cover this entire vase with a pattern. And this is something you can probably do with all kinds of prints, but with simple shapes, it's gonna be easier. But basically, unrelated to the design of this vase, I'm just gonna create this kind of net pattern that goes around the entire vase and it's actually really easy as well. So let's go ahead and switch back to white PLA. By the way, I just read the manual, which is something I don't do all the time. Um, this pen can go between PLA and ABS mode, and those three settings aren't actually speed settings. They're three different uh, temperature settings, but the temperature kind of affects how fast it comes out of the pen, as you saw, so they're effectively the same thing. All right, so we could really put any kind of pattern on top of this vase, but I think we're gonna start out with this kind of zigzag pattern going up along the length here, and then we'll just go all the way around with those zigzags and have the points meet up, which basically forms these rows of diamonds, and it ends up looking kind of like a net wrapped around the print, which is kind of cool. And just like a net would stretch as it wraps around this vase, we're gonna try to make the zigzags a little larger at the wider portions, and then make them a little narrower as they get towards the top. All right, so here's our first line, and I'm using the slowest setting right now. And as you can see, it's, it's blobby. 3D pens are always gonna be blobby. That's kind of just the nature of the pen, but you gotta embrace it. That's the artsy side of things, and that's why it makes something interesting that a 3D printer couldn't really do in the same way. So there's one row, and like I said, I'm gonna do this next row in a way that all the zigs and zags meet up with each other and form these little diamonds. There's two, and now we just have to do it all the way around the vase. <laughs> so maybe I will use the faster setting. Whoa, that's a lot quicker. Yeah, as it turned out, the speed settings on this pen can be kind of wild. It's not super consistent, but there we go. I went all the way around, cleaned it up with some clippers, and there we have our finished piece. It's pretty messy, but it makes it look like an actual rope net that stretched around this vase. All right, skull guy, quick little net vase. 
two uh, pretty cool little techniques. This one got a little messy. The pen, it seems, uh, is not that good at maintaining a constant speed. And it was starting to jam already, which I think just goes to prove what I've realized in other videos, which is you might as well go with a really cheap 3D pen because uh, they all end up pooping out eventually. Although, with this next one, we are gonna try going with the Three Doodler Create Plus. This is a higher end 3D pen and um, it's got a pretty good reputation. So this might be an exception. And uh, I'm using this one because I've got some three millimeter or 2.85 millimeter ABS filament that I need to use up. This vase is also printed in ABS. And we're gonna try a technique here that you can do on more than just vases. It can actually be really cool on any low poly model. Basically, I'm just gonna follow the edges of the model. All these edges that already exist, I'm gonna go over those with the 3D pen. I've got all these different neon colors. So what I'm gonna do is, with all of the lines that are going in one direction, I'll make them one color. All the lines going in the opposite direction, I'll do in the second color. And then we've got a few horizontal lines that I might do in the third color, or I might uh, do something else. We'll kind of see how it goes. We are gonna be using 3D printing spools of ABS for this, but since the 3 Doodler usually uses sticks of 3D pens, and the filament kind of rotates as it's feeding in, we do want to cut these into more manageable pieces. So I'm gonna cut this into a length, a length, <laughs> this amount of length. What is this? Maybe like eight or nine inches? Wait, I have a ruler right here. Yeah, it's like nine, 10 inches. But um, as long as you're able to kind of form it into a straighter piece, that should help prevent any clogs, which of course we don't want. All right, so I jumped right back into it. And once again, I'm just doing all of the lines that go in one direction first using this neon yellow filament. And you'll see here that I'm kind of doing three quick passes over each line. Instead of doing one really slow and thick line, I find that that helps me get a nicer looking line overall. It just looks cleaner in the end. And you're usually gonna want to do all of one color before you switch to another color or try to get as much of one color done first because it does take time to switch between the different colors. So I'll finish all the yellow first and here's what that looks like. All of them going down and towards the left. And now for all the edges going down and to the right, I'll use this orange ABS for Matter Hackers. Again, you'll notice me doing three or four passes over each edge. And also instead of stopping between every edge, I kind of just quickly go over the yellow part that I've already done and just jump that gap. As long as I don't build it up too fat, it should be okay. And yeah, let's go ahead and do the horizontal lines with this neon green ABS. Great, there we have all our neon colors. It looks fantastic. We could definitely stop here, but I wanna try one more thing, which is adding dots wherever these 3D pen lines intersect. So I'm gonna load up some white, and I actually only have PETG filament, but it has a similar melting point to the ABS, so I think it'll stick down okay. And I think it'll work on the 3 Doodler Create Plus, even though it's not exactly made for PETG. But as you can see, I'm basically doing the same thing here that I did with the eye of that skull, which is kind of just letting the plastic blob up in one spot and creating all those big shiny white dots at every intersection. Well, that turned out really cool. The PETG actually works fairly well with the 3D pen. I mean, it was super stringy, but hit that with the heat gun and that's taken care of really nice and easily. But yeah, this, uh, this whole edge highlighting technique is really cool. And I'm gonna try it again with a more wild shape. This one was actually made in VR by taking low poly spheres and subtracting them from a cube actually. And then I ended up with this kind of apple core vase. It's really cool. And it's got like some subtle edges and some hard edges. So I think I'll do them in two separate colors. So this time around, I'm gonna do all the subtle edges with the green. And then I think I'll finish off the hard edges with that white again to make it really striking. All right, here I go again. And there's really not much that I can say at this point. All of these techniques basically are the same. It's just giving yourself a rule and then following that rule across the entire model. 
So in this case, the rule is basically all these concave lines I'll do with the neon green, and then all those pointier edges I'm gonna do with a thicker white filament. There were definitely more green edges here than I realized when I started, and it became a bit overwhelming. I thought it might be a bit much, but once I added those white outlines, it kind of pushed the green back into the background and created a better piece. So I'm really glad that I ended up doing that thick white outline on all these stronger edges. It's a pretty cool look. I also realized that the filament going into this Create Plus pen doesn't actually twist around like the old Create pen did. So it looks like that's one of the things they fixed with this newer version. You might actually be able to use the filament directly off of the spool without cutting it into shorter sections like I was doing. Once again, I'll finish this off with the heat gun to get rid of all those PETG strings. And we've got ourselves a very interesting vase. It's got a kind of digital Tron electronic hacker <laughs> looking style going. It's totally wild, but I really like it. And I'm actually tempted to redo this as a multicolor 3D print. Man, both of these vases turned out really cool. And like I said, this technique isn't just for vases. You could do this with all kinds of low poly prints and you know, you could decorate all your prints. So even if you're not super artistically inclined, if you're into 3D printing, you might wanna look at getting a cheap 3D pen just to see what you can do. And you know, this giant arm pen, I'm not totally sold on it just yet, but I'm very happy about the 3 Doodler Create Plus. It seems like they really improved this version of the pen because now I'm able to stick just about any third party filament in it and I had no jams. So that's really giving it a big bonus in my book. It might make it my favorite pen again, so I'll have to play around with that one a bit more. If you wanna buy either of these pens, I'll put links in the description, and I'll also put links to my mini factory where you can download all of these vases for free. And I'm interested in seeing what you guys come up with, whether it's decorating these vases in your own way, or just doing other cool combinations of 3D pens and 3D models. If you like these 3D pen videos, if you wanna see me do more, make sure to like this video. Leave a comment if you have any cool ideas. But that's it for today. So until next time, I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. And as always, stay inspired.